bien, muy bien. Y buenos días. Uh, muy buenos días, buenos días. Espero que estén bien. I hope you guys are well. I hope you guys are surviving the heat. We're getting ticking back up. This is not fun. Uh, okay. <laughs> Where's that rain? It's sure not here. <laughs> yeah. uh, bueno, vamos a ver. Uh, we're going to review any information from last week's homework. We're going to do that first. Then we're going to do some warm up, warm up stuff with listening comprehension that ties back into um, reflexive use and just reflexive meaning. And then we'll get back into the whole thing of where do all those little pronouns go. So that's going to trail off a little bit towards the end. Ah, uh, fantastico. Primero, primero, primero. First, I'm going to put this on so you know what I am referring to. Ustedes tenían este video. Uh, the Agustina, uh, her stretching video, and you have to kind of fast forward. I fast forward through all the waiting. Yeah, all the waiting. She does a countdown. <laughs> I fast I, forward through that stuff. I decided that I guess I, <laughs> I had to make sure I did this hopefully right in Spanish. Me duele ver esta video. Este ah, video. <laughs> te duele ver este video. Okay, vale. Uh, por el de estirar o por las pausas? On account of the stretching or on account of the pauses? Oh, oh okay. <laughs> Bien. Uh, actually, I chose this simply because she worked in a fair amount of uh, some of these concepts with um, uh, reflexives and ando yendo gerund type verbs so that it gave you an idea of how that is typically used. Okay. Uh, bien. Hay alguna pregunta? Hay alguna pregunta? I think this is simple enough. I don't anticipate a ton of questions on this video, but if you have one, please do bring it up. Oh, fue muy obvio or was it super obvious? Muy obvio? Muy obvio? Okay. Vale, bien. Ok, we'll take that off then. Bueno, una cosita. I got my checklist for class every day. Uh, bien, adelante, adelante. Moving on, moving on. I want to see if you had similarly a question on this reading practice, El Canal de Panamá. And if you did not get time to listen to it during the week, do, re do remember that you've got this play button El Canal that de Panama. plays the reading Hola. for you. Okay. And I'm, this is I'm, a very low level reading. See, sí, bien. I, I'm like the first guy who commented under below here. Where's the second part that they say that, that it's split into two? But I only saw what the one play link and then the one, you know, the one section to read. Uh, on the reading here? Hmm, what did I put out with that? Vamos a ver. Oh, it, could it be this? Don't know. No, no, no. It's not what you put out, but look, scroll down a little bit. And now scroll up a little bit. Now keep going up, up, up. Okay. Uh, right at the top oh, of the Oh, so the audio now, is split in two. Yeah, but there is no two. <laughs> You're right. There is no two. Tienes razón, Marco. Sí, no hay dos partes. Mm, me parece un error. Uh, I think that is just an error. I no, I see what you're saying. I didn't. You know what? I just said, uh, that went right over my head. <laughs> I was looking at the content in it and not that direction so much. Uh, I don't see two parts at all. Audio is split in two. Hmm, no sé. Uh, I see nothing about that, but... And okay. somebody, left, somebody left a question down at the bottom of this that put the same question, like, where's, where's part two? <laughs> I only found one audio bar and nowhere to go to the second part of that. Oh, well, yeah. 
and answer. Let's see, hmm, do they have anything? Despite the instructions, there was only one sound bar and only one text page. Yeah, uh, the instructions are wrong. That's all we can say. <laughs> Hay un error en las instrucciones, en las uh, uh, indicaciones aquí. Yeah. Okay. Vale. Um, you know, this is a pretty straightforward reading thing, and I just gave it to you so you've got some uh, reading chance, and so that you can use this to actually read aloud. Anytime you get a reading segment like this, it's a great idea to. Actually, if you have the, an audio section as this did, to listen to that as you read along. And it's also a great idea to record yourself, to get your little old cell phone, find the little record button, because all cell phones have some kind of recording button that allows you to record your voice. And it's a good idea to record yourself and then listen to, hmm, how did I do? Did I have nice open vowels? That kind of thing. Mm -hmm. So uh, just as a reminder, these are great things uh, to do to kind of train both your ear and to train your, your voice. Vale, bien. Um, okay. Me parece que no hay... Ninguna pregunta. I think there are no questions there. Okay. Y aquí, aquí, aquí. This was a nice breakdown like, oh, like I would have done for my students. This is a nice breakdown on a board. And we're going to get to that in a minute. This was designed to give you an idea of what's going on with commands. And she used commands with just a really limited number of uh, uh, reflexive verbs. So we're going to get into that just a little bit later um, and come back to that in a bit. Okay. A ver. Bien. Uh, vamos a calentarnos. We're going to do a warm up. And this warm up is not. It is tied to the topic of reflexives, but is not tied to the topic of where the pronouns me, te, no se, where they might flip around, okay? Es una práctica muy general. And there are two levels of this practice, but I thought this was uh, fun and worthwhile to check out. Okay. Vamos a ver. Oh, I need to put my share screen back on. And yes, my sound is turned on. Vale, bueno. Uh, uh, reflexivos, escucha. Ejercicio de escucha. A listening uh, exercise. So this is going to be very general uh, as opposed to grammar specific. More tied to, uh, I will say, more tied to, let us say, perhaps... Uh, what all these words mean, how it ties mm -hmm. together, general listening, content-wise, not grammar-wise, vocabulary-wise. Listen to each dialogue and write the letter of the best answer. And you see in number one, they ask, which one was not mentioned? So we're going to be listening for which one of these three, see? Mm -hmm. ¿Cuál de las tres frases? Uh, no se mencionan, which ones are, not, uh, which one is not mentioned, cual, no, no se menciona, which one is not mentioned. Okay, uh, y tenemos A, me ducho, B, me peso en la báscula, báscula es a uh, scale, bathroom scale, sí, bien, uh, se me afecto. So we're going to be listening in this very short mini dialogue for which of these three, A, B, or C, which one is not mentioned? Y vamos a ver. Me ducho rápidamente. Me peso en la báscula. Me maquillo. Tres sí. actes. Otra vez, una vez más. She goes kind of fast. Una vez más o no? Una vez más. Bueno. Me ducho rápidamente. Me peso en la báscula. Me maquillo. Mm. Which one is not mentioned out of there, that A, B, C? C. 
Se. Se. Me afecto, she did not mention. Okay. So you what, see what, what, what was the third sentence that she did mention? What was it? Me, me ducho rápidamente. Me peso en la báscula. Me maquillo. Me maquillo. Me maquillo. If you're a guy, you don't care about that sentence uh -huh. because me maquillo, I put on makeup. Ah. Maquillarse, buena pregunta, maquillarse es to put on makeup. So unless you're an actor, if you're a guy, you don't care about that verb because you're not going to use it very much. <laughs> right? Uh, vale, bueno, okay. So now you kind of see where this is going. Otra vez, en número dos, número dos, which one is not mentioned? I'm going to try to make this just a touch bigger. Un poquito más grande. Ah, okay, vale. Número dos. Which one was not mentioned? Y tenemos aquí, ah, me pongo desodorante. Sí, bien. Desodorante no es ropa, pero usamos ponerse con desodorante, con cremas, con todo. Okay, that can be for anything you put on your body. Uh, me visto, me visto, me miro en el espejo, me miro en el espejo. I look at myself in a mirror. Mirror. Okay, vale, bien. And we're listening for the one that is not going to be talked about here. Me pongo desodorante, me visto, me peino. Me, sí. me pongo desodorante. Me visto. Me peino. Me, me miro es espejo. ¿Cuál de los tres? Which of these three is not mentioned? Sí. Sí. Otra vez. Sí. sí. Uh, me peino. I comb my sí. hair. The one they mentioned was I comb my hair. Me peino. So that was the item that was inserted. Okay, vale. Bueno, adelante, adelante, onward. Which one was not mentioned? Y tenemos aquí, A, me baño. B, me pinto los ojos. Pintarse es paint oneself. Mm -hmm. But uh, in this case, again, it would be a makeup related thing. Sí, me pinto los ojos. Me pinto los labios. Lips. Labios. Lips. So, Putting on lipstick, yeah. I, we I, feel, I feel left out. <laughs> you feel left out. <laughs> lo siento mucho. Um, lo siento mucho, Marcos. Uh, sí, bien. Me lavo la cara. Me pinto los ojos. Me pinto los labios. Una vez más. Me lavo la cara. Me pinto los ojos. Me pinto los labios. Which one is not mentioned? Ah. Oh. Ah. And instead of that, they gave us a uh, me lavo la cara. Me lavo la cara. I wash my face. Okay. Uh, in a similar vein to me baño, but me baño is talking about her whole body, right? Bathe, take a shower. Okay, vale, bueno. Adelante, adelante. Cuatro. Which one is not mentioned? Y aquí en número cuatro tenemos a me peino. B, me cepillo el pelo. Uh, cepillarse can mean to brush either for hair or for teeth. Depende, because you use a brush on both parts of this body, just different kinds of brush, right? So, me cepillo el pelo. Me pongo gel. And a lot of places use gel as in like bath shower gel. So, me pongo gel. Bien? Mm -hmm. okay. Me peino. Me pongo gel. Me miro en el espejo. Okay. Una vez más. Me peino. Me pongo gel. Me miro en el espejo. B. 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 Sí. Uh, the thing he did mention that is not on that list is me miro en el espejo. Bien. Me miro en el espejo. I look at myself in the mirror. Bueno, vale. Cinco. Which one is not mentioned? Número cinco. Me lavo la cara. Me corto las uñas. Uñas. 
unjas, 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 unjas. Unjas son nails, ¿sí? Uh, me corto, me corto las unjas. Uh, me limo las unjas. Limo es como... Wow. Everything you do with your nails to make them look nice. See, filing them down and such. Okay, okay. bien. Wow. Yeah, filing them down. Me lavo las manos. Me corto las uñas. Me limo las uñas. Ooh, un poquito diferente. This is a little different. Una vez más. Lavo las manos. Me corto las uñas. Me limo las uñas. Mmm. Ah. Ah, no se dice me lavo la cara, sino me lava las manos. Mm -hmm. I think they, they did use me lavo, but with las manos instead of la cara. Okay, so we're drilling not just your reflexives here, but overall all kinds of stuff. Bueno, se, se. Uh, bueno, tenemos aquí el número seis. Me levanto, me lavo los dientes, sí, bien, me visto. Y vamos a escuchar aquí. Me levanto, me ducho, me visto. Me levanto, me ducho, me visto. Be, be, be. Be, sí, be. Uh, uh, oh, otra vez, sí, me... Me levanto. Me levanto. Me ducho. Me ducho. Me visto. Me ducho. There's the one that is not in your selection. Me ducho. I take a shower. Bueno, siete, siete. Which one is not mentioned? Y tenemos aquí en la lista a me ducho. Be, me seco. Me seco. Secarse es dry off. Okay. Me seco, me visto. Y vestirse otra vez es get dressed. Sí, bueno, vamos a ver. Me ducho, me visto, me pongo perfume. Una vez más. Me seco. Me ducho, me Be. visto, me pongo perfume. Ve. Ve. Me seco is not mentioned. Me pongo perfume. Me pongo perfume. I put on perfume. Perfume, yeah. So that has is not mentioned there. Uh, ocho. Ocho, ocho. Me pongo el traje de baño. Traje de baño. Tra ¿Qué es traje de baño? ¿Saben? Traje es suit. Mm. Entonces, traje de baño es bathing suit. bathing suit, yeah. A swimsuit, a bathing suit. It's sometimes called a bañador. You know, there are different terms. Just as we say swimsuit or bathing suit, and both of them mean the same thing. Yeah, mm -hmm. they have different terms for that piece of clothing, too. So, traje de baño es swimsuit, bathing suit. Okay, me pongo el traje de baño. Me pongo sandalias, me pongo un sombrero. Y todo es ponerse, ponerse, put stuff on your body aquí. Bien. Me pongo un traje de baño, me pongo gafas de sol, me pongo un sombrero. Mm, una vez más. So we're not listening for me pongo, we're listening really for what you're putting on, ¿sí? Me pongo un traje de baño, me pongo gafas de sol, me pongo un sombrero. B. 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 No se B. menciona B. Bueno, a ver. Uh, me pongo gafas de sol. Gafas de sol. Uh, sunglasses. Okay. Do you know that there are two words for this thing here? Mm -hmm. En España se dice gafas. I have even heard Some folks in Latin America also use gafas, although I think in Latin America, what is more common instead of gafas is lentes. Mm -hmm. Lentes kind of looks like it could mean lenses, and it does mean lenses. Lentes is used for gafas, uh, and so it would be lentes de sol in Latin America, lentes de sol. Curiously, in some places, lentes will 
refer more specifically to this part of the glasses. So it depends on where you're traveling. Yeah. Lentes does mean technically just the lens part, the vision part of the glasses, not the frames in mm -hmm. some places. So just know uh, once in a while you hear the term anteojos, which literally means in front of your eyes. To me, that is a more antiquated term that older folks may use, like kind of, you know, you don't hear people using spectacles very much in English anymore. Yeah, anteojos is more kind of the spectacles kind of uh, tag to it. So I think gafas and lentes are what you hear. Bueno, adelante, adelante, me, ah, bien, otra vez tenemos en número nueve, me corto las uñas, me corto las uñas, me limo las uñas y me visto, vestirse otra vez, get dressed. Uh -huh. Bueno, a ver. Me corto las uñas, me limo las uñas, me pinto las uñas. Ah, bien. Uh -huh. Una vez, y me pinto, es eh, sí, uh -huh. bien. Me corto las uñas, me limo las uñas, me pinto las uñas. Ok. Sí. 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 No se dice nada de me visto. Me pinto is paint, but limo is, you know, file down. Ok. Bien. The manicure part, the filing down part. Bueno, y por fin, por fin, tenemos aquí número 10. Número 10. Número 10 tiene me levanto, me ducho, me seco. Me levanto, me ducho, me seco. Me quito la ropa, me ducho, me seco. Una vez más. Me ah. levanto. Me quito la ropa, me ducho, me seco. Me levanto. Y A, ah, no se mencionan A, ah, ¿sí? <risa> me quito, me quito la ropa, me quito la ropa es, I take off my clothes because he's ready to get in the shower. And obviously, if you get in the shower with your clothes on, you're probably too drunk to take them off or I don't know what. Okay, bien, me quito. Quitarse, quitarse es to take off an article of clothing. Or, you know, a lot of times, even if people talk about like washing off the sunscreen, which out here we're really familiar with that, uh, you know, when you're done with an indoor activity, you want to get that sunscreen off. So you might hear that uh, as well, but usually referring to clothing, quitarse, quitar without the se, part of it, quitar is just to take something away. Okay. Uh, eh, la mamá quita el juguete al niño. Le quite eh, el juguete al niño. The mom takes the toy away from the little kid. But quitarse is to take something off your body and generally, most of the time, refers to clothes. Okay. Vale. Um, I will send that little link. Uh, it's a nice listening comprehension. And they, they go a little, at a pretty good clip there. Pretty good clip. Vale, bien. Okay. Uh, in the same vein, but um, but a different uh, a different objective here. Here we're not listening. We're going to go through another thing. And again, this is going to go to big meaning rather than our grammar point for the day. Big meaning. Uh, and it is going to have a lot of examples of reflexive verbs in it. Uh, and so they want you to listen to the dialogue and we're going to choose the letter of the best answer. So now we're not listening for something that's missing or not mentioned. We're listening for what would be the right response or answer for, in connection with whatever they're talking about. So let's listen to the <laughs> ideas that are potential answers. Aquí. Es posible. Ah, todos los días, todos los días es. Every day. Every day, exacto. Una vez a la semana, una vez a la semana, one. A week. One time weekly, once a week. Once a week. Una vez a la semana, a la semana. Sí. Uh, the a la semana means per week. In this case, 
Una vez al día would be once a day. See, una vez al mes would mean once a month. Aquí tenemos una vez a la semana, once a week. Y se, nunca. Never. Never. So we're listening for information about frequency here, right? We're listening for something that talks about frequency. Vale. ¿Te afeitas todos los días? <laughs> no, me afeito las piernas una vez a la semana. Let's listen again. Wow, is there any way for... Is that too fast for you? Mm -hmm. uh, let's see if I've got a way to slow it down. Oh, playback speed. Ooh, normal. And sadly, it's off screen. I'm going to see if that helps you a little bit. ¿Te afeitas todos los días? <laughs> No, me afeito las piernas una vez a la semana. Mm. B. B. She was talking about shaving her legs. Okay, okay I don't know what she Once said. a week. Okay, vale. Dos, dos. Ah, mm -hmm. dos. Me, y, ten, y las respuestas posibles, the possible responses. Me ducho primero. Tomo café, me lavo los dientes. And remember, some people use cepillarse los dientes, brush your teeth. Some people use lavarse los dientes. They both mean the same thing. They're talking about brushing your teeth. Okay. Me ducho primero, tomo café, me lavo los dientes. Bueno. ¿Qué haces primero después de levantarte? Camino a la cocina y tomo café. Ah, and let's listen for what he says first. ¿Qué haces primero después de levantarte? Camino a la cocina y tomo café. Okay. Do you get what question he's asking there? Let's listen one more time for that. This, I don't think it lets me pause in the middle. No. ¿Qué haces primero después de levantarte? ¿Qué haces primero? What do you do? First, when you first get up. Sí. Ah, uh, sí. Uh, después de levantarte, after getting up. Mm -hmm. And now she's going to say what she does. Mm -hmm. Camino a la cocina y tomo café. Camino a la cocina mm -hmm. y tomo café. Entonces, so the answer is? B. B. Bien, bien. Okay. So, uh, you know, we don't, we kind of don't know really what we're listening for. We got to really listen for the message. This one is a lot harder, which is why we're doing this second, not first. Okay. Uh, respuestas posibles. Possible answers. Ya. A, mi hermana. B, yo. C, mi perro, porque duerme en el baño. Oh, we're listening for a person. Well, except for mi perro really isn't a person, but remember in Hispanic culture, we really kind of do consider our pets to be part of our family. So, okay, they're a person. I, I can buy that. Mi hermana, yo, mi perro, porque duerme en el baño. Duerme en el baño. Sleeps in the bathroom. He sleeps yeah, in the bathroom. Yeah. Okay, so we're listening okay. for something that's going to talk about who's doing something. Okay. Bien. Bien. ¿Quién pasa más tiempo en el baño en tu familia? Vivo sola y yo paso más tiempo en el baño. Una vez más. ¿Quién pasa más tiempo en el baño? En... ¿Quién pasa más tiempo en el baño? ¿Quién pasa más tiempo? Who spends more time? En el baño. Tu familia. Vivo sola. Y yo paso más tiempo en el baño. No. Yo. The person she mentions is yo. Yeah. Okay, no, bien. Okay. Now we're listening for another frequency issue. Okay, a frequency issue. And remember, you may not understand every single phrase in that audio piece, but we're listening for whatever is pertinent to this. And we know it's a time issue. Because our possible answers are A, a veces, B, siempre, C, nunca. So the answer is either A veces, sometimes, 
B, siempre. Always. Always. Or C, nunca, nunca. Never. We're listening for a frequency of how often something is done here. ¿Te duchas por la noche? Me encanta ducharme para relajarme. Me ducho cada mañana, pero cuando tengo tiempo también me ducho por la noche. Bien. Wow, she gave a lot of information there. I'm going to see if I can still slow that down. Oh, okay. I got to slow that down for you. Uh, I'm going to give you the link for this again. And do notice that the little dot, dot, dot thing is what you can use to slow it down for yourself. Because they, uh, I think they go at a regular clip because there are people who do test kids. Mm-hmm. Believe it or not, this is used for high school kids. Mm-hmm. And they expect you to, yeah, they expect you to get that. Uh, yeah, but they have a way for you to slow it down. So let's listen one more time. And you don't have to know everything they're saying. We're, we're listening for whatever talks about that frequency. So we're listening for one of those frequency answers. ¿Te duchas por la noche? Oh, that was really Me slow. Encanta ducharme. Te, te duchas por la noche. Do you take a shower at night? At night. And she's going to say, me encanta, I love to. Me para relajarme. Me ducho cada mañana, pero cuando tengo tiempo, también me ducho por la noche. Ah. Siempre. Let's play that again, because she gave a lot of information there, didn't she? Mm-hmm. Okay, now, I'm not going to pause through the question this time, but I may try to pause her mid-sentence there so we can decipher some of that, okay? Vale? Mm-hmm. ¿Te duchas por la noche? Do you sh- or shower? Me encanta ducharme para relajarme. Me encanta ducharme para relajarme. Me encanta mm-hmm. ducharme. Mm-hmm. Sí? I love showering para ah, re- relajarme. Ah. To relax. Mm-hmm. Okay, vale. We'll let her finish with the rest because relax it doesn't tell us about frequency at all right me ducho cada mañana pero cuando tengo tiempo también me ducho por la noche ah Thanks. takes every shower every morning but but i didn't quite get why she couldn't at night okay let's let's do that so you're picking it apart this is good this is really a when I there, this is good. So, okay, we're, we we got to listen to that very tail end to get that frequency part. Me encanta ducharme para relajarme. Me ducho cada mañana, pero cuando tengo tiempo, también me ducho por la noche. Pero cuando... Tengo tiempo. Cuando tengo tiempo, me ducho por la noche. Siempre. Cuando tengo tiempo, when I have time, ¿sí? me ducho por la noche. I shower at night. A veces. A veces. A veces. Sometimes. She said always in the morning, right? And the question was about, do you shower at night? So what she's saying is, oh, sometimes, a veces. That was a much tougher one to untangle, but it's a good thing. And and you know that you've got this little bar mm-hmm. to do your uh, feedback speed. We're going to try to, uh, I think, I thought it would set it at the slower speed for you guys, for all of them. I don't believe it does. So, Okay. Now, again, we're listening for a time mark here. Whatever the answer is, it's talking about time. A, a las diez. B, a las once. C, muy tarde. So we're listening for what time? A las diez Ooh. at? 10, 11. 10, a las once at? 11. 11, muy tarde. Very late. Very late. Really late with no specific time mentioned. Okay. Vale. ¿A qué hora te acuestas? ¿A qué hora te acuestas? Acostarse es to go to bed. ¿A qué hora te acuestas? 
What time do you go to bed? Bien. Mm -hmm. Bien. Generalmente me acuesto a las diez. Oh. Ah. ah, that one was more straightforward ah. than the last one, right? Bueno, yeah. sí. Yeah. Okay. Aquí como respuestas posibles tenemos una vez al día, una vez al día, dos veces al día, o después de cada comida, después de cada comida. Mm -hmm. So we've got once a day, twice, twice a day, day, right? To say twice, you have to say two times, dos veces al día. O Después de cada comida, after every meal, right? Their comida would not mean food. Their comida means meal. So we're listening for frequency here. Again, frecuencia de una acción aquí. ¿Cuántas veces te cepillas los dientes en un día? ¿Cuántas veces te cepillas los dientes en un día? Mm. How many times you brush your, brush your teeth? Ok. Siempre me cepillo los dientes después de cada comida, o sea, tres veces al día. Sí. Let's listen one more time. Una vez más. ¿Cuántas veces te cepillas los dientes en un día? Siempre me cepillo los dientes después. Ah, siempre me cepillo los dientes después. Después de cada comida. Después de cada comida. O sea, tres veces al día. O sea, tres veces al día. O sea, tres veces al día. Sí. Sí, sí. When somebody says, o sea, o sea is two words. O sea, S-E-A. O sea is a way of saying, I mean, o sea, uh, that is to say, I mean, yeah, that is, that's what the o sea is used for. Okay. Vale. Aquí tenemos otra vez uh, cosas o frases que, que indican a uh, la hora del día, la hora del día, the time of day. A las cinco, a las seis, a las siete. Sí, bien, bueno, a ver. Uh, ok. ¿A qué hora te levantas por la mañana? ¿A qué hora te levantas por la mañana? ¿A qué hora te te levantas por la mañana. What time do you get up. Get, get up? ¿A qué hora te levantas por la mañana? In the morning. Me levanto muy temprano. Más o menos a las cinco. Todos los días entre semana. Una vez más, sí o no? Ok, una vez más. ¿A qué hora te levantas por la mañana? Me levanto muy temprano. Me levanto muy temprano. I get up really early. Más o menos a las cinco. Todo... Más o menos a las cinco. Más more o menos. Less, more or less at five. Okay. And she's going to talk about... Mm, when during the week? Todos los días entre semana. Todos los días entre semana. Días entre semana. Oh, todos los días, every day, entre semana of the weekday. Oh, okay. okay. Bien, bien. Mm -hmm. Vale. Bueno. Okay. So, a las cinco. But uh, notice all the information in there is not what you needed for the answer, right? We're just picking out where the answer is. Uh, aquí pon con... Ocho, tenemos A, ah, no, a veces me pongo desodorante, a veces sometimes me pongo desodorante, bien, ok, B, solo cuando trabajo, solo cuando trabajo, only when I 
work, go to work. work or say, si, sí, para mí es necesario. Yes, for me, it is necessary, meaning for me, I've got to do it. Okay, well, uh, we're something about an ac activity, not about time, not about time, but something about an activity is what we're listening for. ¿Te pones desodorante todos los días? ¿Te pones desodorante todos los días? ¿Te pones desodorante todos los días? Todos los días, every day. Do you put on deodorant? Do you put on deodorant every day? Tengo mucho estrés y necesito ponerme desodorante todos los días. Tengo estrés, tengo estrés, estrés. We, we take stress and put an E in front of it because stress, S-T-R, you can't do in Spanish, so it has to be estrés. Tengo estrés, tengo que poner desodorante todos los días. I'm stressed out, I have to. Yeah, bien, sí. Uh, uh, so which one makes sense? A, B, C. 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 Para mí es necesario. Bien. And notice sometimes we answer, uh, you know, we use a different way to answer. Not exactly what you heard, but she said every day. Well, it's if it's every day, it can't be a veces. Yeah. Uh, it can't be solo cuando trabajo. She, she talks about every day. So, para mí es necesario. For me, it's necessary. It makes sense there. Okay. Now we're listening for a for frequency thing again, a time-related idea. Nunca, todas las veces, uh, oh, it should say todas las veces. We need a las there. Veces posibles. Uh, Antes de salir de la casa. Antes de salir de la casa. Before leaving the okay. house. Okay. okay, so we've got a never. We've got every time possible. We've got before leaving the house. Vale, bien. Aquí, vamos. ¿Cuántas veces te miras en un espejo durante un día? ¿Cuántas veces te miras en un espejo? How many times do you look at yourself in the mirror? Every day. Es importante siempre mantener una apariencia profesional. Me miro en un espejo cada vez que pueda. Ooh, difícil. That one's harder, no? Okay. <laughs> una, ve una vez más. Uh, we'll, we'll stop it in the middle. Ah... Uh, ¿Cuántas veces te miras en un espejo durante un día? In a typical day, how much do you look at yourself in the mirror? Es importante siempre mantener una apariencia profesional. Es importante siempre mantener la apariencia profesional. It's important to maintain my professional appearance. Professional appearance. So now she's going to elaborate. Me miro en un espejo cada vez que pueda. Me, me miro en el espejo. I look at myself. Ah, cada vez que pueda. Wow. Cada vez, you know the cada vez. Mm -hmm. Cada día is every day. Cada vez means every time. Yeah. Ah. Uh, Que pueda, every time I can. The pueda comes from puedo. Every time I might be able to. <laughs> Cada vez que pueda. Every, every chance I get, we'd probably say in English. Cada vez que pueda, every time that I can. Okay. Meaning I don't know how often really I can, but every chance I get. Yeah, we would use different words in English. We would get the every chance I get. So which response makes sense for that? Nunca, todas las veces posible, uh, posibles antes de salir de casa. Okay. 
So it does the best as possible. Todas las veces, and we need to make it las veces posibles. That is what makes sense. That was a challenging one. Um, and when you get the link for this again in your email, I challenge you to kind of leave it at that fast clip speed next time uh, to make it a little bit more challenging for yourself. Okay. A ver. Uh, uh, por fin, por fin, por fin. Finally, finally, here we've got una hora. Ah, una hora. Una hora. Ve, media hora. Media hora es... Half an hour. Half an hour, sí. Y uh, 15 minutos, 15 minutes. We're talking about probably how long, maybe, you do something. A ver, bueno, ok, vale. Generalmente, ¿por cuánto tiempo te bañas? Generalmente, ¿por cuánto tiempo te bañas? Generalmente, generally, ¿por cuánto tiempo te bañas? Uh, how, yeah, how long do you, I know, bañarse, take a bath, but some places use bañarse instead of ducharse. Okay, so same thing. Wash your whole body off, right? Whether it's ducharse or bañarse. Okay, we'll let her continue with an answer. Si tengo la oportunidad de bañarme, me gusta pasar por lo menos una hora. Si no tengo una hora, prefiero ducharme. Ok, let's just do that one more time. Generalmente, ¿por cuánto tiempo te bañas? Si tengo la oportunidad de bañarme. If, oh, si tengo la oportunidad de bañarme. So here she is talking about bañarme instead of ducharse. Mm -hmm. Sí. Uh, bien, if I get the chance, meaning she doesn't always take a bath, okay, like most of us. Me gusta pasar por lo menos una hora. Por lo menos. Ah. And which time did you hear? Ah. At, least, at least one hour. Ah. Una hora. Una hora. Okay. Mm -hmm. Una hora. There it was. It was buried in the middle. And then she finished up with. Si no tengo una hora, prefiero ducharme. Si no tengo una hora. Si no tengo una hora, prefiero ducharme. If I haven't got an hour, I'd rather take a shower. I'd rather take a shower. Okay. So okay. she is talking about really soaking in a tub, not just mm -hmm. using bañarse for ducharse there. And she mentioned una hora. Bien? Mm -hmm. Bien. Vale. Bueno. Um, this is pretty good listening uh, drill because it talks about all things reflexive, all the information tied together which is what you do when, yeah, you are speaking to somebody. See, ¿Sí? bien. Mm -hmm. um, vale, bueno. Um, we're going to move on a little bit. I'll give you the links to those. It's a really super good listening comprehension thing. Test yourself. Push your limits a little bit. Okay. A ver. Um, what we're looking at today, we're going to move on to our little grammar segment here. And that little grammar segment is about what happens. Uh, uh, well, the big picture was where, how, how come the words me, te, nos, se, those little pronouns, how come sometimes they're in front of a verb and sometimes they're tacked onto the end? And how do I know? And well, the sad answer to that is that, uh, there are different places those pronouns can go, but there are some rules that uh, definitely govern uh, the, the, some rules that are stricter. Okay, so we looked what we looked at last week was the more lax, more whatever you feel like rule, which says if I've got two verbs working together, yeah, in a verb phrase, not just a single verb by itself. When two verbs work together, you got a choice. 
Es flexible. It's flexible. You can put the metenos in front of the first verb that gets conjugated, or you can tack it on to an infinitive, tack it on to the end of the infinitive. You can tack it on to the end of an ando yendo gerund, the ing form. So when we got a verb phrase with two verbs working together, es flexible. That situation of where the mete no se goes is flexible. You get a choice and people will shift them around depending on what they feel like saying. But, um, you know, we did not have that flexible situation when you have just a verb by itself. Me levanto, me ducho, uh, me, me lavo las manos with one verb by itself that's just talking about an activity. We don't get that choice. The mete no se must be in front of the verb. Okay. Uh, we're going to get now into a slightly different situation. And this slightly different situation, which gets a little bit complex, is about commands. Okay. We talked about the single verb by itself, pronoun in front of the verb. Talk about the verb phrase together. You get a choice of two places. This thing of commands is a little bit different. Mm -hmm. Commands are not considered in Spanish a plain old, plain old statement of fact. So verbs, mandatos, uh, you see on her little screen here, she's got this term mandatos. That means commands. Mandatos informales just means informal, meaning to commands, right? Um, mandatos are not, strictly speaking, plain old present tense, right? Plain old present tense talks about what is actually really happening. Facts, right? I'm doing something, you're doing something, he or she is doing something, a bunch of them, they're doing something, <laughs> you know, a group of people, we are doing something. That's presente, present. Commands means it's an order being given. So that means I'm giving an order to you. Okay. And in English, that's it. Story ends, right? The you is implied. Very seldom does somebody say, hey, you park over there. They'll just say park over there. So in other words, park, hey, park is a command. It tells somebody, go do that. Or a command might be, hey, don't do that. So commands can be go do it, which we call an affirmative command, or they can be, hey, don't do that, right? But in English, it just comes out that way. A command is usually given to you. A command can be, hey, let's, all of us, it might be, but usually a command is you do something or, hey, don't go do that. But in Spanish now, this is more complex because I don't have one you. I've got a you for tú. I've got a you for usted. I've got a you for ustedes. And in Spain, I have yet another you, but we won't, <laughs> we won't go there mm -hmm. for the vosotros you command because that's a different, different thing altogether. So we're going to focus on the tú command, the usted command ustedes command. So what do we need to know? For right now, you don't need to, uh, uh, for the exercise I gave you, you don't need to stress about how do I form the command yet. What you need to know is with a reflexive verb, if I'm giving somebody command saying, go do that with a reflexive verb, and it's an affirmative, hey, go do that, I must, 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 must attach the pronoun to the end of the command. And here it won't be me or nos. It'll be for an informal command, te. For a formal command, it'll be se. 
So affirmative command, do attach it. Go do it, command, do attach it. But negative commands have to do the exact opposite. Negative commands, we go back to the idea of pronoun cousin comes in front of the verb. So we do two different things with the pronoun with commands. Affirmative command, attach it to the end of the command. Negative command, bring that pronoun back in front of the command. Like we did for plain old things like me lavo las manos, me lavo la cara, same position, right? Just it'll be a negative command. I am hoping that this little thing she did with some of these verbs, we're going to try to go through some of these examples again. Entrenarse means to train. And I think she did this one because kids work out to train for sports. Yeah. So that's why we've got that verb. Entrenarse is a reflexive verb. You train yourself. You do a workout. Okay. Bien. So a command is entrena. And if you're telling somebody, if the coach, yeah, coach sings out that kid that's sitting there not doing anything. He says, hey, Susana, Susie, <laughs> get out there and do that workout. It's entrenate. Entrenate. He's telling her, hey, Susie, go do it. Now, why, why is not that te entrenas? Well, entrena is the command form for tú, and we tag the te on. And when Susana hears that, entrenate, she knows he's telling her, get up off your butt and go do that, Susana. Yeah? Uh, entrenate. Right? It's not a fact. A command is not a fact. If you tell somebody, go do it, it means they're not doing it right now, but you want them to. And to convey that idea, we need what is called a command form. Uh, it's another level of complexity. So, entrenate, entrenate, see? And, and she talks about where it needs an accent mark. For you guys, that's not a big deal. It's a big deal if it's being written down, if you're reading it. It's not a big deal if you're speaking. Because you know that entrena sounds like entrena, tre, entrena. And we just keep the stress on tre when we add the tan to the end. So in written form, that means it needs an accent mark for you speaking. You keep saying entrena, so it really kind of is a non-issue when you're speaking. Okay, so she shows you where the accent mark goes. That's what was happening there. But look, for a don't work out, that te for a negative command has to come to a different place. So, entrenate, train, work out, go do it. And hey, we're done with practice, kids. No more working out. No te entrenes. No te entrenes. That's a negative command. Do notice that entrenar, an AR verb, affirmative commands, keep that a, a, a of an AR verb sound. Entrena, a. It keeps the a sound you expect for entrenar, an AR verb. Negative commands are going to take opposite vowel for tu. So it's not no te entrenas, it's no te entrenes, okay? You don't need for today's exercise to know the entrenes with ES. You don't need to know that. We're just looking at where the te word flips around, okay? Bien? Yeah. So that was the point of that, to show you that negative commands, the te has to come in front of that verb form, just like a statement of fact, me lavo la cara, uh, 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 ustedes se levantan, you guys get up, it has to come in front once again, bien, uh, 
And she has one other example. So we're taking now the next example, acostarse, to go to bed. If you tell a kid, hey, go to bed, right? Uh, acuestate, go to bed. You're giving somebody an order. They're not actually in the process of doing that right now. You want them to go do it, right? That's why it's a command. It's a different verb form. Acuestate. And notice the S goes away. The S that you expect for a tu form, it goes away, right? And we've just got uh, acuesta, acuestate, and we tag on the te. But if you tell somebody, hey, don't go to bed yet. I'll let you stay up. Yeah, don't go to bed. Stay here. A negative command, whether it's for tu or stay there, anything, any negative command, the pronoun comes back up front, in front of the verb. No te acuestes. But notice that it's not no te acuestas, it's no te acuestes, right? Bien? Vale. Okay. Yeah. So that's what that was about. And you see, we've got the negative commands have an added level of complexity. With the affirmative command, the S sound just goes away. That's not a big adjustment. But for the negative command, the S comes back and the opposite vowel, right? The one that sounds like it's the wrong vowel is used and the s comes back so two commands are a little bit funky a little bit tough all right so now to help with this transition what we want you to focus on is not how do i form the command so much <laughs> but where is the pronoun Part of the command going to go. So, okay. If we're giving a command, that pronoun me is out of here. Me is gone because we don't use me for a command, right? A command is given to you. So the pronouns used for you are either te or se, right? And usted command, it's a polite command, is going to be a se pronoun. Uh, and ustedes command, hey, you guys go do this, will likewise be se. Bien. So, okay, vale. A ver. Um, pronouns have a fixed, not flexible position with commands. That's going to be the takeaway here. So let's see what we can do with this. For affirmative commands, do attach the pronoun. It'll be command plus pronoun attached, like, again, the caboose on the end of the train. All right. In this case, it's got to be either a te, because you're giving it to somebody on a familiar level, or a se, and we segment it out. So we're going to start on a la izquierda on the left-hand side, the tu commands, tu commands. And just notice that we drop the S off the end to make it a command. Yeah. So, uh, sentarse, have a seat, will become? Siéntate. Siéntate. Siéntate is the command. We need to, when we write it, have, oops, an accent mark, which I haven't got my keyboard. <laughs> Ah, bump me out of my keyboard. Let's try that one more time. Siéntate. Siéntate. And you know when somebody's hanging on the end, they mean, hey, go do that. Siéntate. Sit down. Siéntate. Siéntate. Right? If we didn't have this te on the end, you would still expect to say sienta. You don't really need to, like, yeah, you see, if you're speaking, you're not writing it. You don't have to worry about the, the accent mark. The accent mark, guys, comes into play because I'm tagging on an extra syllable onto the word. And when I do that in Spanish, when I tag on an extra syllable 
and it changes the it changes the accent rules. I need to stick that accent mark where I want that stress to stay. I, I want that verb to always sound like sienta. And by tagging on the te, I am shifting the stress rule. And I have to show you, mm, here's where you, we still want it to sound like sienta, right? With no accent mark written, guys, I would technically, by writing it, be telling you with no accent mark, sientate, sientate. And nobody punches the ta. <laughs> we want it to sound like sienta, right? So that's the reason. So, okay. So we still want this to sound like divierte, divierte. So if you tell somebody, say, hey, have a good time, enjoy yourself, where does the te go? On the e, first e. We just attach it. It's diviertete. Diviertete. And let's maybe add a little underline here so that you know, because this one also ends in a te. Mm -hmm. That verb happens to happen in, in a te. And now, of course, I've got to put in an accent mark, but, you know, no biggie. Diviertete. Diviertete. Wow. Long word. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Diviertete. Enjoy yourself. Have a good time. Okay. Wash up. What's that going to sound like? Lavate. 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 We just tag it on to the end. Lavate. You're telling somebody, go do it. Right? Now, okay, technically, we need a little accent mark there. Lavate. Lavate. Okay. Lavate, lavate, fácil, lavate. That means somebody is not observing that you are actually doing it. They're telling you, go do that. Lavate. Bien? Uh, somebody says, wake up. Despierta. Despierta. And you burst into somebody's room and say, hey, wake up. It becomes... Despiértate. 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 Wake up. And technically, I've got to add in my accent mark. Despiértate. Despiértate. Bien. Vale. Bueno. A ver. Uh, fall asleep. Well, usually don't say that except to kids. Kids, you're putting to bed. Well, Maybe if your better half is is uh, sick and you're telling them, <laughs> yeah, get some sleep, right? So, duerme, duerme is a command and fall asleep is? Duermete. 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 Duermete, we tag the te on to the end. And in, because of the writing convention, we have to ha add an accent mark in there. Duermete, duermete. Bien. Uh, bien. Okay. Vale. Bien. Uh, poner. Poner shortens to an odd form. Poner for command is one of what they consider the irregulars. Mm -hmm. And it becomes pon. So put something on like your shoes or a jacket or a hat becomes ponte. 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 Put it on. You tell somebody put on sunscreen. Ponte crema solar. Ponte crema solar. Put on sunscreen. Yeah. Ponte los zapatos. Put on your shoes. Ponte, ponte un sombrero. Put a hat on. Ponte, ponte. Put it on. Okay. And here's a real favorite one. If somebody is telling you, stop stressing. <laughs> yeah. Somebody is telling you, chill out. Hey, relax. Calm down. Calm down becomes. Calmate. 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 Calmate, calmate is calm down. 
It's meaning, hey, don't stress out about this, right? Calmate. And technically, I need an accent mark here. Oh, okay. We can say just very briefly, I'm just going to show you here. We didn't put an accent mark on ponte because this is one of the odd ones because pon is only one syllable. Mm -hmm. When I add on the te, adding on the te says, oh, it ends in a vowel. I stressed a second to the last syllable. It obeys the conventions of stress. Mm -hmm. Therefore, I need no accent mark. I only did an accent mark when it disobeys, when it breaks a rule regarding stress in a word. Okay, so ponte, because it's only one vowel, doesn't break any rules, it doesn't need an accent mark. Okay, calmate, bien. So we're looking at all affirmative commands here. We tag it on, it's the caboose on the end of the train, and there we go. Siéntate, diviértete, lávate, despiértate. Duérmete, ponte, cálmate. Okay, those are four familiar basis commands. If somebody is giving a polite command, we cannot use te. So here are commands that are usted commands. And again, notice for affirmative commands, uh, the tú commands just take the S off of the tú form. Except for this oddball here, because that's one of the oddballs, one of the irregulars, right? Uh, so we're not really focusing on, on commands per se, but we're already presenting you with the command already made. Here are commands for uh, a la derecha, on the right, usted commands. They're pre-made, so you don't have to think too hard about it. But new, do notice that for sentarse, an AR verb, for sentarse, AR verbs are going to flip and use what looks like the wrong vowel for a command. For sentarse, an AR verb, we're going to use e, e, e endings. Endings that look like they belong to ERIR verbs. So commands for polite, usted, ustedes, becomes mm -hmm. siente right? And sienten. It becomes opposite vowel, not divierte, but divierta. Divertir is an IR verb. It's going to use what is an opposite vowel, divierta, enjoy, right? Uh, uh, eh, bien, diviertan. Uy, a ver, ay, diviertan, ¿sí? ¿Sí? Uh, it'll be not lava, but lave or laben for more than one you, right? If you're talking to a group, uh, it'll become not despierta, despertarse, but despierte with an E at the end. Now it is a command and despierten. Hey, you guys, a command, right? It'll become not duerme, but duerma. Or for a group of people, duerman, right? It'll become, here's the real oddball change up. Wow, pun. But for usted, it is ponga. That ponga comes from the root idea of pongo, the yo form. Poner is an ER verb. ER verbs should get e, e, e endings, but this has got an a, a ending. It still gets an opposite vowel kind of ending, right? But this is based on pongo, getting rid of the o at the end of pongo, and it becomes ponga. So ponga is the usted command. Pongan is the ustedes command. And then for calmarse, AR verb, we go back to that simple idea of opposite vowel instead of calma, calme, or for you guys, calmen, calmen, bien? Okay, so let's see what happens to uh, go do it command <laughs> with 
se, or well, perdón, with uh, using se, but for usted, polite, or ustedes, a group of people. Bien, uh, siente, sit down, becomes. Siéntese. 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 And I need my accent mark to come back and siéntese. And similarly, hey, all you guys sit down. If a waiter brings you in and asks all of you, two, three, four of you at the dinner table in the restaurant to be seated, it'll be please sit down. Sienten. Siéntense. 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 That's how it comes out. Siéntense, right? Uh, diviértete becomes divierta, diviértase, diviértase. And for a bunch of people, uh, right? People are getting drinks. You're setting everybody up. They're grabbing things out of the cooler for a backyard picnic is diviértanse, have a good time. You're making sure they get the beer out of the cooler and they're off on their merry way to enjoy your picnic. Diviértanse, diviértanse, bien. Uh, wash up is lávese, lávese, bien. Lávese, but if you're talking to a group of people, it becomes lávense, bien. Mm -hmm. Okay, vale. Uh, wake up becomes despiértese, despiértese, bien. Uh, but uh, if you've got a group of little kids all in the same bedroom, two kids or more in the same bedroom, and you tell them, hey, we're leaving the house in an hour, wake up. It's despiértense, despiértense. Bien. Mm -hmm. uh, fall asleep. Duérmase. Vale. Uh, bien. And hey, you guys, fall asleep is duérmanse. Bien. Mm -hmm. uh, duérmanse. Uh, put something on, a piece of clothing becomes. Póngase, póngase. Bien, vale. A ah, un uh, momentito, póngase. Póngase. And all you guys put this thing on, right? Pónganse. Bien. Uh, you're on a tour and everybody, they're reminding everybody to put on sunscreen. Got a bunch of people on a bus. Pónganse la crema solar. Pónganse la crema solar, por favor. Please put on your sunscreen. And Calm down becomes Calmes. calmese, see? Calmese. Calmese. Mm -hmm. Or here is what I always said to my kids of 35 or 38, all in one classroom, uh, when they're all wound up, keyed up, and I got to tell them, hey, take it down a notch, you guys. It would become this command, calmense. Calmense is like telling the whole group, hey, settle down. Calmense. Take it down a notch. <clears throat> Bien. And if I'm talking to 38 kids in a group, which is what <laughs> used to happen, that's the way you give the command. Calmense. Calmense. Bien. Okay. Making a little more sense? Sí. Mm -hmm. Bien. Okay. Vale. Más ejemplos. Okay, let's look at uh, same thing. Still, yes, go do it. Still, yes, go do it. Take something off. And generally, this is that whole thing of take your shoes off if you come in the house. Yeah, lots of people really like that. It becomes for a tool command. Quítate. 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 Bien, quítate. Ooh. Quítate, 
quítate, quítate. Somebody says, hey, look at that. Look at that. I want you to really notice that. Really pay attention to that. It's fíjate. Fíjate. Fíjate is uh, what a person may say on a tour again, or, you know, they just really want you to notice something. Really, really notice, really pay attention. It's fíjate, fíjate, fíjate. Ah, take care of yourself. Take care. This is something that you hear people say a lot when they're saying goodbye. Cuídate. Cuídate. This is the much beloved way of telling someone, take care. Yeah, cuídate. Uh, in Mexican culture, you never say goodbye just once and walk away. You can say goodbye three times. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so it's adios. Nos vemos. Cuídate. That's what's expected. If it's just uh, nos vemos, see ya, and taken off, they're like, whoa, what was the rush? What did I do? Do I smell bad? What's going on? Yeah. So you always say goodbye three times, and often that last thing is take care. See? Cuídate. Okay. Somebody tells you, ooh, get better. It's... Mejorate. 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 Mejorate, mejorate. Get up. Levántate. Levántate, levántate. Levántate. Uh, quedarse is to stay in a place. And if they're telling you, hey, don't move from there. Stay right there. It's... Quédate. Quédate. Hey, stay put. Right? We would say stay put. Stay still. Stay there. It's quédate, quédate. And, ooh, acordarse. To remember is reflexive for that verb, acordarse. So it's acuérdate, acuérdate, okay? We're going to look at and start to get used to how it sounds to use the other pronoun for an usted command, an ustedes command. And you've got the same thing, quitarse, take off. It becomes for usted. And instead of te, we put on a. Sí, quítese. A se. Quítese. 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 Quítese los zapatos. Bien, quítese los zapatos. Or you're talking to a group. Quítense. Quítense. Bien. Yeah. Uh, the formal command, fíjese, fíjese, see? But if you're talking to a group of people, it's fíjense, okay? You say goodbye to one person, you're on a, not on a tú, uh, friendly level, it's cuídese, cuídese, take care. Uh, you talk to a bunch of people, say, take care, it's cuídense, cuídense, see, get better, mejorese, bien, mejorese, uh, group of people, mejorense, uh, mejorense, bien, vale, vale, uh, not levanta, but levántese, 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 or levántense, get up, folks, levántense, levántense, stay put, quédese, bien, uh, hey, all you guys, stay right there, quédense, Quédense aquí, por favor. Quédense aquí, por favor. Stay here, please. See? Uh, and, oh, why did I skip the tranquila? Wow. Stop my tranquila. Tranquilate is another way of calmarse. It uh, means the same thing. A different verb that means the same thing. I, I skipped that on the first round. Sorry about that, guy. guys. Uh, tranquile se. Ooh, too many L's. 
I, 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 why did that double? Ooh, I think I my, my Microsoft keyboard was in English mode and like doing weird things to me. Uh, tranquilese, tranquilese, tranquilese is a different way of saying calmarse. That's all it is. Tranquilense. Again, you're telling somebody to calm down, to chill out, to not get worked up. Uh, tranquilense. Bien. And acuérdate becomes acuérdese, acuérdese. Whoop, bye. A ver. Hit the wrong button. Uh, acuérdese, acuérdense. Bien. Okay. Make sense? Mostly, you probably won't be giving a lot of instructions to people, but you hear it a lot when people tell you in a group setting or one-on-one -on -one to go do something. Bien? Vale? Okay. We're going to take a look at the negative commands, and we're going to feel like we're rushing a little bit through this, but just know, whereas here... We can, we attach, attach, attach. We furiously attach all the time, attach it to the end. For the no commands, it's going to come back up in front of the verb, right? Mm -hmm. So don't take a shower because we got no hot water. <laughs> the te has to come back up in front of the verb. It becomes no, no te duches, right? No te duches. Uh, for a formal command, no se duche. No se duchen. And notice I've given you all the command forms. This two command form is the one that in a negative two command, it changes to something very different. So don't worry about how to do that yet. Just know it's given to you in the right form. Uh, don't get lost is no... Te pierdas, no te pierdas. But for an usted command, it becomes no se pierda, no se pierdan. Hey guys, don't get lost. No se pierdan. Bien, okay. okay. Don't forget about that. No te olvides, no te olvides. No te olvides, but for an usted command, no se olvide. No se olvide, or for, hey, you guys, don't forget, no se olviden. No se olviden uh, uh, las entradas. Don't forget your tickets. No se olviden las entradas. Don't forget those tickets, guys. No se olviden las entradas. Bien. Uh, no, don't complain, no te quejes, right? But no usted command, it becomes no se queje, no se quejen, bien? And don't put something on, okay, maybe not, yeah, no te pongas, no te pongas, and for an usted command, no se ponga, for a group command, no se pongan. Bien? Yeah. Vale? Yeah. Uh, so just know, again, you're going to hear these. More important for you to hear these and know oh, they're telling me to do something. Mm -hmm. Probably less important for you to give a command. More important for you to know somebody's telling you, go do that. See? Bien? Um... And I am picking things that are kind of common here, right? Irse is to go away. So if somebody tells you don't go, it's familiar. No. No te vayas. Bien. And the formal, formal B, no. Se vaya. Or to a bunch of people, no se vayan. Right? Don't get scared. Asustarse is to get scared. No te asustes. Don't get 
frightened. Don't be scared, right? Mm-hmm. If it's a command to usted, no se asuste. No se asuste. Uh, to a bunch of people, no se asusten. Right? Uh, don't worry. And this is a, something you'll hear people say. No te preocupes. Don't worry. No te preocupes. Right? But if they're not on a tu basis with you, it'll be no se preocupe. No se preocupe. Or to more than one of you, it becomes no se preocupen. Right? Mm-hmm. Don't go to bed. No te acuestes. No te acuestes. For usted, instead of te, it's a se. No se acueste. No se acuesten. Okay? And don't sit down like, uh uh-oh, there's something on the seat. (laughs) You're going to get something terrible on your pants, right? Is no se sientes. No te sientes. But for usted, it becomes no se siente. And for a group, no se siente. Bien? So that's our little pronoun placement thing. You don't need to know how to form the commands. You need to know they're telling you, don't do this. <laughs> don't do this. See? ¿Sí? Bien. Vale. Okay. Alguna pregunta. Any kind of question about those? It's just kind of a matter of getting used to, okay, it goes in, you know, it. they're going to go in opposite places. I don't get a choice. Like you had the choice last week. We don't have that kind of choice. Uh, And forming the commands is a more complex thing. If you really want me to do it, get into a lesson on that, we can. But since we were just working with the reflexive thing for now, just know, um, you know, that's why we were focusing on this. Okay. Any kind of question on that before we wrap up for the day? You won't necessarily be able to speak these perfectly right away. Just know when you're listening for, you're listening for commands, right? That's the important thing. Because a lot of times as a tourist, we are getting directions from people. Okay. Um, So, vale. Bien, bien, bien. Nada más, nothing else? Si o no? No? Nada? Okay. Um, We're going to get into something totally different, totally new, really for the, you know, I think we're going to just do some very general things for the last couple of classes of summer session. Uh, So you're going to get a uh, nice, nice little listening video that doesn't really focus on any particular grammar thing, just listening for information. You'll get some related questions to do a conversation, to tie some conversation into that, uh, to prep some conversation ideas for next week. And they'll be loosely tied to that particular video. Uh, We're going to also get a little something to talk about the topic of uncountables. People often ask about the uncountables and I have promised several lessons ago. uh, Oh, we'll show you a little something about which, which nouns talking about objects, things do get an el, la, los, or las, or we don't bother maybe with the el, la, los, or las. Uh, because I did promise that, but I'm 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 saving some of these tie it together issues <laughs> that came up at stray parts of a summer session, and we're going to tie some of those in to next week. Bien, mm-hmm. yeah. todo bien, vale, perfecto. Uh, and I'll see if I can find a nice little reading segment as well, and maybe we'll do a little reading segment to work on pronunciation a little bit all together in class next week. Bien, bien. Fantástico. Ok. Espero que estén bien. 
toda la semana. Espero que tengan buena semana. I hope you guys all have a really good week. Ok. Y cuídense mucho. Cuídense mucho. Bien. Sí, nos vemos más tarde. Sí, nos vemos más tarde.